Balinderi is a small village in North Tipperary with amazing community. And the Roche's restaurant was open here in summer 2020. With all the COVID trouble, may not look like best idea, but the Roche's became one of the most successful and most looked for restaurants in the area. As you see, they're working hard there. Smoke is coming out of the smokehouse. And I'm going to talk to Mark Irvin, head chef here, and look for answers. What is the actually uh, secret to their success? There's no secret really, it's just um, we do everything fresh in house. We don't have a freezer, we don't have a microwave. We just provide stuff that other restaurants don't provide. Um, when you come in here, your meat has all come from within five kilometers. Your vegetables are all from local producers. The cheese is from local producers. Uh, it's not a secret, I'll tell anybody that wants to know. That's the key, it's the key more than the secret. Um, you just have to care about what you're doing. And if you do, especially as a chef, then it will show in the food, you know? And our process, of course, is different. And smoking is not exactly a very common way of, of uh, cooking in the area. That's quite novelty. Uh, do you think this is the part of the success as well? Yeah, it definitely, uh, it definitely helps. Um, I mean, anyone can do it, but to do it right is, is difficult. And the only way to get it right is thousands of hours of trial and error. We do a lot, we do a lot of cooking on the smoker. Uh, we do a lot of open flame cooking. It's nearly everything we do is through the smoker and then finish on the open flame. Um, getting it right is the key. If you do it wrong, it's bitter. If you overcook it, it falls apart. Everything we do now, ribs, pork, brisket, is all down to a fine art, really, at this stage. Okay, so you have your, uh, your own recipes. You are a head chef here, so you're practically leading all the operation here. And uh, uh, this is practically a part where, where, you, uh, where you are uh, starting your cooking, isn't it? Is it, is it always starting in, in the smoker? So I have a series of original rubs and um, marinades that I use that nobody else knows about. Um, they're created by myself and I share them with, with the chefs in the kitchen. All the meat gets dry rubbed um, or marinated and then the cooking time in here, depending, I suppose, brisket can be 16, 17 hours, pulled pork can be more. Um, our burgers get at least two, two and a half hours here. Uh, ribs, six, seven hours depending. When we use a whole spare rib, it's two kilos. It's, it's value, like, you know? Yeah, and this is cold smoking, is it? Or, or is it we can because... do both. Okay, we, we can, can do, do it. Yeah. 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 Okay, we so. cold smoke chicken breasts, we hot smoke ribs, we, you know. Yeah, because we, when, you, when you mentioned burger, you know, to, to have burger there for two hours, it need, needs to have very strong, well, strong it, flavor it, to, it to be It will be under there. 30 degrees okay. centigrade. It will be way below 20, 30 degrees centigrade. Okay. Um, you have to be very conscious of bacteria, so it has to be in the coldest part of the smoker, with the smoker running at 30 degrees. So when you take the burgers back out, essentially they're still ice cold, the same as when they were in the fridge. They're raw, but they are smoked. Okay, so this gives practically flavor, and then you use your, your barbecue to, to finish it off on the fire. Yeah, we only use um, oak that's been dried for about a year. Okay. So and it's about 20% moisture. And you see, you have timber down there. You have lots, uh, so practically everything is sourced locally. Everything. Uh, timber, food, uh, practically everything, even, even the people. <laughs> well, I brought most of the movie from Limerick. <laughs> okay, so this is the only, only, only thing that was practically brought up here, you know, but uh, everything else is sourced uh, locally. So this is your uh, maybe biggest attraction, is it? Uh, this is tomahawk, uh, tomahawk yeah. uh, steak. Mm -hmm. How heavy, how big is it? It's it, it comes in between 42 and 48 ounces. Um, this one is over 44 anyway, definitely. Okay, so that this is practically feeds whole family, isn't it? <laughs> well, it can do, but we sell them to one person. <laughs> yeah. I'd say a person needs to take, take it away after, after that, you know. It's, it's yeah. lots of meat, lots of beautiful meat. Looks very good. It's prime ribeye. Yeah, and, and is it, is it uh, what breed is it? Hereford. Okay, so Hereford, local, local Hereford. Okay, it looks beautiful, absolutely amazing. I take closer picture here, so people can see and taste practically through the camera. Mark, so this is your smoker, you call it Beast? Yeah. If I'm aware of that. Okay, so this is the, I'll, I will just check inside you at, at the moment you have a bit of chicken in it. Mm -hmm. Cold smoking chicken. And it's cold smoking chicken. It takes lots of, lots of food, actually. It does. Yeah. It so, takes about 90 kilos of ribs. Okay, and how long will you keep this chicken here? Uh, about 90 minutes. 90 minutes to two hours, depending. Um, I'll know by the color um, when it has the flavor. Okay. We wait for it to get the smoke ring on the outside, which is almost a pink tint. And then we can cook them over the open flame as they're ordered, but they will be cold still. They're ice cold now to the touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they will still be. 
Perfect. It's 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 fine size smoker, isn't it? Yeah, like it's ninety kilo. Ninety kilo is lots of meat. So, Mark, you are open six days a week, okay, from Tuesday until mm -hmm. Sunday, yeah. and. Uh, how much meat do you use practically over the week or, or what, what are the about numbers so we will have a bit of idea so in the summer we use probably just under three tons a week three tons of meat mm -hmm. okay that's a lot it is a lot it's a lot to prepare it's a lot to cook and we don't have a huge amount of space but the fact that we get a delivery every day uh, works out quite well for us you know okay so we can get i can get a quarter ton of ribs on a tuesday morning and wednesday morning and if i need to be on thursday morning you know and how often do you change your menu? Every 12 weeks, so I change seasonally. Okay. We have four menus a year um, in order to keep freshness at its peak. So in the autumn, we had venison. We're just finishing up on duck season. Our duck is going off. Crab season is nearly upon us. We'll have fresh crab. Whatever's in season, whatever berries, nuts, um, whatever fish game is in season is what I will use for 12 weeks. It's also better for price if something is in season. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to buy venison um, in, in the spring because it's going to cost more. It's farmed. I don't want farmed. I want wild. Uh, so it's better for us. It's better for our customers. Yeah. And venison is locally sourced as well if you, if you can. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's amazing. Mark, on the top of all the original stuff you are doing here, like smoking and, and uh, barbecuing and sourcing locally, um, what, is, uh, what is the secret uh, to, your, to your cooking? Well, you probably hit the nail on the head with your question, originality. Um, the recipes that I use here, you won't get them anywhere else. Um, this is as good of barbecue food as you will get anywhere in the world, in my opinion. Um, I don't know another place in Ireland that's doing things the way we do them, at the level we do them, um, as consistently as we do them right. I just don't see that there is anyone that can actually keep up with us. I would like to think that next year, the coming year, we will certainly uh, win some awards. Um, just because of what we do and how we do it, the, the originality, the freshness, the seasonality, the quality, the consistency, it's the same every day for 12 weeks when I change the menu. You know, you're always going to have your, your barbecue staples, your pork, your brisket, your ribs, but we're always also going to have um, smokehouse seasonal game, um, fresh seafood, all that kind of stuff. I feel that there's probably nobody on the island at the moment that is at the level that we are at. And how did you get into the smoking and, and this area? Because obviously you need to, you need to uh, look for, for the recipes and you need to develop them, as you said you know, uh, previously. But it, you need to get this idea. And, and did you have experience from elsewhere? Because I know America is the big space, a place where, where, where they are smoking. So did you get your experience there or did you learn here in Ireland or elsewhere? No, I learned here in Ireland. Um, a lot of it is through trial and error. And also um, with a very good friend of mine, we competed nationally um, and internationally in barbecue competitions and um, we had a lot of success um, we had a lot of success early on as well when we didn't know very much so kind of the more we got into it the more we tried the more we researched and the more we realized we can actually do this our own way you don't have to stick to the the classic way of doing it. you can create new systems you can create new recipes and when you get good enough you can create new methods and so that's kind of what i've been doing over the last number of years um, I mean, before I started here, I was at home for a year because of coronavirus, like every yeah. other chef in the country. And I was, before I ever knew I was going to be working here, I was already developing rubs, recipes, homemade barbecue sauces, just to have them anyway, because it's a passion, more, more so than it will ever be a profession, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that leaned itself heavily to this when I got, when I got here. So you put Ballinderry on the on the map, well, right? Yeah, but DJ and DJ, on the map. DJ as well. Yeah. yeah, we have to mention DJ, of course, yeah, as course. well. And you are uh, cooperating with the chestnut in Bor as well. That's right. So we do open fire cooking there at the weekends, um, and it's quite busy. We don't have a smoker there, but what we do have is open fire barbecues, and so we cook in front of the guests over there. I mean, it's fantastic. Really good cocktails and freshly cooked meat are amazing together. Okay, so you are not bringing smoked meat from here, you are doing just barbecue there? No, I'm bringing smoked okay. meat um, in a cooler, Yeah. and we have a refrigerator over there, so we put it in there, and then when it's ordered, we cook it. Okay. We cook it for the guests over So there. that's the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in, yes. in Chestnut as well? Okay, and are you planning to expand a bit more, or is it is it uh, uh, too early to ask you the question like this? Peter, we haven't even got started. Yeah. Um, we're going to expand, yeah. This is a monster we've created, like you know, and it's a massive, massive team effort. The Roach family um, are very, very good to their staff and they know that if they hire the right people and let them do their job, they'll be successful. And that's what we're doing. This is a team effort from everybody that works here. And we're going to expand massively over the next three, four years. It's going to be huge.
Okay, I'm wishing you all the success and uh, I'm, uh, practically it's great to see locally uh, Balinderi uh, doing so well and Deroshtis, of course. And before we go, tell me exactly how to pronounce Deroshtis. The is it right? How is, what is the right pronunciation? Deroshtis. Deroshtis. Okay, so for everybody to know exactly Deroshtis. Thanks very much, Mark. Thanks, Peter.